April 19th, 1775. This dude lived in Arlington, Massachusetts. Paul Revere showed up at Homeboy's house in the middle of the night. He's like, the British are coming. 78 year old grizzled veteran, two dueling pistols that he acquired during the Pontiac <laughs> Rebellion because the previous owner, and I quote, died suddenly. 700 British soldiers are retreating back to Boston. Shoots with the musket, kills, kills a British guy. Whips out the two pistols, kills two more, pulls out the sword and Yeah, I'm always uh, do you have a do you have a slur for Minnesotans? Yeah, what is it? Uh, I don't know. I just get really mad because <laughs> their their license plates. Every like state has their own little like catchphrase or whatever. Yeah. Blah, blah blah. Minnesota's is home of ten thousand lakes. Oh, I forgot. That I opened it's like every me every one. pothole with water in it. They're like that's a fucking lake added to the tally. Oh, fucking, okay, I'm gonna that have to counts. take issue with this. Yeah, go ahead. Wait, what? <laughs> this we have a standard for lake. Are we are we recording? What? No. Okay. You're good. Okay. Oh, I'm just wondering. How animated I should be about this. Oh, all of it. We're recording. Yeah, no, for okay. sure. <laughs> 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 because he was going to start pulling out the actual We have a standard. Eli is racially ambiguous. What's up, everyone? It's Eli. Uh, everyone is probably like, what is going on? Ah. First things first, we're going to wish Batty the most success and love on his next adventure. That is all that matters. Our boy is going out, he is going to do D&D, he is going to stream, and he is going to crush it. And we are going to support him as a community and a family. So first things first, Batty, cheers to you, brother. We wish you the best. We love you. Cheers, brother. I'm so proud of what you're doing, and I'm, I, I am excited to see what you come up with. Love. Yeah. Pickle juice. It's so delicious. <sighs> hey, you're going to get real me for a second. Um, I know you see the internet personality of me. Hyper, autism everywhere. Um, I'm an introvert at heart. Uh, a lot of people don't know that. Uh, I, I like my quiet time. I like my family time. And that's that's me. I'm, this is very socially draining. Opening up. Ah, yeah. I just want to thank each and every one of you. And I want you to all know Unsub isn't changing. Unsub has a trajectory. We have a path. We have a defined mission. And by God, I'm going to carry it across that finish line. So help me, God. Not for myself, but for all of you. And I mean that from the bottom of my goddamn heart. If you want a real moment with Eli, it is. I know what you've all given me, and I am so goddamn appreciative of it till the end of times. I'm so happy. You, you rewind back to when Ryden was born. Never thought any of this would have been possible. I had a dude coming out of the military doing therapy, personal training, poor shit. <laughs> and I get a watch. I, I now have secured multiple things. I, I get to motivate people to show them that like, no matter what, you can grow into something amazing. Most importantly, I get to support my kid O'Reilly and show him like, hey, buddy, doesn't matter what trials and tribulations you have. At the end of the day, as long as you work hard and you have a positive mindset and you dig deep, anything is possible. Like anything's fucking possible. And I appreciate all of you at the end of the day for making that a thing. I love all of you. And I'm sorry I'm crying right now. I'm just so happy. And I, I am so thankful for all you have done as an audience, the team we have, I am so supportive of. Show, G Van, Batty, Fluck, Donut, everyone that's been part of this process. Thank you so goddamn much. You guys are family. Always. At the end of the day, you are all family, and all the guests that have been part of this means the fucking world to me. I'm truly blessed to have each and every one of you in my life. Period. Guys, gals, be supportive of everyone. Just love each other. That's what it should be at the end of the day. It's just love, kindness, support. Y'all are amazing humans. Cheers.
It's like, Jake, they're just lakes. Calm Jesus down. Christ. <laughs> no, there and is. one more fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> These lake property owners can go to hell. <laughs> no, it's no, we have a standard. You. It has to be a certain size, literally, yeah, to like be qualified a as a lake. pothole with water. Look, here's, here's the thing. I went, I did, I did annual training at Camp Ripley one time. Yeah. Big ass base up damn near in Canada. You know how many fucking mosquitoes you have in a state with 10,000 lakes? Oh yeah, brother. It's your state bird. Dude, it's yeah. fucking terrible. That's where my they people were come everywhere. from, dude. The border people. The Ugh. white people? I thought that's no, our... Not, we're the border I, people. I, I thought we're the... the <laughs> other border. <laughs> There's the border people right here. No, the, or, the other border. Uh, uh, yeah. Snow Mexicans. Yes. <laughs> the s- Mexicans. Snow Mexicans. <laughs> ah, yeah, Snow Mexicans. <laughs> this is the most bizarre... I, I, I thought the autistic comedian was going to be the most autistic start to an episode. No. But no, like... Sorry. Fighting over lakes. That no, was a... My hatred of Minnesota. Right off the bat. <laughs> Well, you know, that is the most autistic thing to start with. It's like, no, this lake is better than (laughs) that lake. Ready, everyone? Hold it. One, two, three. (sighs) Fuck yeah. We're getting really good at that now. Mm. I've seen so many of these damn episodes, episodes. I I didn't even have to be instructed what to do. (sighs) Welcome to another episode of Unsubscribe, followed by, hey, your first time on. It's my first time. Unsubscribe, Jerry. We'll be gentle. We'll be gentle. Thank you. Just, you know, maybe a little bit. Spit on it. (laughs) (laughs) Jake, Mr. Jake Watson, the lawyer. That's right. I'm here to break things down and beat people up. We got the beautiful Brandon Baberba. Baberba. And then... uh, can you introduce yourself again? My name's Nick. First time. Uh, we're going <laughs> to test it out, see how he does. I don't know. <laughs> I don't uh, know like I, the last 10 he was on, all did super well, but it's fine. Yeah. I'm, a little, I'm a little anxious about our guests, considering they just started fighting about lakes. The entertainment you know, value not may not be. No, just lakes. That's just one of the reasons I hate Minnesota. The other reason is because they decided to put roundabouts everywhere. I mean, listen, if you expect me to sit here and stand for this from an <laughs> Iowan... <laughs> It's not going to happen. Oh, I'm down for I'm this. Listening. We should have swapped you guys. <laughs> right? I, I just had you it's yell probably up. good. I'm in the middle. <laughs> I'm Can't sorry. Where do you separation. live? I, I live in Texas. I like my state enough to stay there. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, fair enough. But you became a YouTuber, podcaster, social media personality only after you had already established yourself there. I mean... I bought a house. You could buy other houses. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't like, well, I don't want you to know this. You could buy another it's, house. It's, it's not the 1800. I don't have to buy like a fucking wagon and some oxen to move. Like I could just pick my sure? shit up and leave. That's true. But uh, that's why it takes three weeks to come to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, I don't think I'm going to out argue you, but I'm definitely going to try. Okay, good. you're a lawyer. You should be the best. This is, yeah, this is your, your bread and butter. <laughs> Yeah, but he talks so fast, and he also uses the shark hand. Science. The shark the hand. Shark the knife hand. hand. The knife hand. Yeah. Oh man, hand. the comments what? right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, no, it's fine. <laughs> this it's is fine. gonna be He's the new. He's gonna say shark <laughs> hand. It's <laughs> a new piece of merch. <laughs> Weapon of mass instruction, right here. Yeah. That's right. Shark hand NATO. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've never heard shark hand. Wait, where did that come from? Look, it's I. I got my my <laughs> from all the lakes. Hand language. Confused. Sharks don't even shark have hands. Hand 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 <laughs> Be- no, because I was watching. I was watching an Angry Cops episode, and he was talking about a shark attack in someone's yeah, shark face. Attack, yeah. yeah, which is you oh, use knife okay. hands in a shark okay. attack. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, okay. Yeah. that's understandable. I just like shark hands. <laughs> it's a shark going like this. <laughs> you have to knife hand. Here. Yeah, dude, the shark fin, bro. <laughs> Very intimidating. Yeah. Welcome, cool. Jake. Welcome. You. So you, Jake, comes from Corridor Digital. Yep, all the way from the land of corridors. I know from LA, and then mm-hmm. you moved here uh, two, three, three, almost years four ago? years ago. Coming up on it, well, Jake's yeah. been a good friend with all of us. I did not know he was a lawyer for like the first two years of knowing him because yeah. he would pull up in a motorcycle with his tattoos and his leather on, yeah, and do stuff around the office and leave. I was like, oh, and then one day we were actually talking. I was like, so what do you do? He's like, I'm the lawyer. I was like, oh, but like, what do you do for real? And yeah. He's like, no, I'm an actual like. Past the bar, eccentric millionaire. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Living on Hunter Street, yeah. <laughs> just the worst part of LA. You're like, this is great. I fucking love it. Yeah. But to I be fair, there's no real confused. good parts of LA. It's all still fucking LA. It's terrible. Hunter Street hasn't changed. 
Uh, no, yeah, it's, I mean, around it has changed, but the building itself hasn't changed, and I, I like that about it. Are we allowed to say the name, or do we need to bleep out Hunter Street? Mm, I mean, we'll, we won't say the address, but it's probably... I, I yeah. hope not. <laughs> Hunter Street. <laughs> yeah. 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 You mean I shouldn't tell him you're at 47, 25? <laughs> yeah. It's right there, and then we got Mr. Nick just flew in today, our right. baby boy, and then Brandon, just Brandon being Brandon. Being Brandon. Just, We're going to start boxing Dudes being guys. Yeah, I'm excited again? to start boxing again. That'd be fun. Mm, I'm so excited. Who are boxing? Uh, each other. Yeah. Yeah. Brandon it's wants just to spar more. Yeah. Saturday? Saturday we're trying to. We're, we're seeing the dates. Everyone's moving. Right now it's supposed to be... Um, oh my God, I'll at, be here Saturday. I can, I can box. Do you want to? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Saturday. We'll just I set boxed. it up then. Everyone can freaking box. Hell yeah. Nick's going to take him to the ground and yeah. grapple and just break everyone in two. I know how to box too. I box too. Okay. Okay. But you're really good at grappling. Say, I'd prefer you didn't. <laughs> He's really good at grappling. Nick, you've had a story to tell. Oh, God. No, I can't yet. I'm not there. What? Do you need more <laughs> no, caffeine? It'll get, it'll get there. Yeah, do, for I, sure. I do want to <laughs> very much thank you and show appreciation for your choice of oh, merch. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Look at that. I almost did it. It was almost, it was almost uh, close I know, enough. I saw it. Ah, you I, fucker. I pulled the shirt up in the way. Yeah. Eli got me once. I'm never going to get got again. It was worth a shot. I think it was too early. <laughs> It was too early. It was too early. You also can't hit me with my own move that I hit you with. Yeah. <laughs> the I same know. setup. Was, I still it, was it really? Yes. Oh, I don't remember that. So he boops everyone. Because uh, I, just, I was okay. like, first I'd like to call okay. attention to Brandon's shirt because you were wearing my <laughs> shirt. And you're like, you went to like, <laughs> we did just you? talked about it and I did it to him. I was like, he boops everyone like this. And Jake goes, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been <laughs> booped in so long. I forgot what it was called. Dude, it's, it's like, the wow. best. That's, that's typically, called, that's I hang called being married. Men. It's the best thing on the planet. <laughs> you haven't been booped in so long. For what it's called, I'm like, yeah, that's marriage. Yeah. That's that's not what I meant, Brandon. No, no. dude, no, it's that the is. best opener. Within like two hours of knowing somebody, you just boop them. A hundred percent. If it's a grown ass man and yeah. you get booped, it's like, well. We're either going to be mortal enemies or we're going to be really good friends. Right. There's no fucking in between now. I'm just now I have to wait for you to boot me. Yeah. Well, I mean, no. you just got he booped. already got you. It's kind of like okay. the clone conundrum. It's like, well, we're either fucking or fighting. <laughs> Science. 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 Yeah. <laughs> well, he just wet Willie Donut, which is great. <laughs> It was good. There was a chinchilla in the corner. Yeah, he was just that like... That first podcast was ridiculous. <laughs> wet Willie Donut. I got... A, a the first podcast. The he came at me hard. He just opened up my first podcast. So, what's your least favorite race? <laughs> like, thinking he's going to throw me off. And I'm like, marathons. What about yep. you? And whatever. I started I, laughing. I booped him. And then randomly, I'm like, has that chinchilla been there the whole time? And Cody goes, what? And looks. And I give him a wet Willie. He's <laughs> just a bully. Was, yeah. Yeah. He's yeah, a high guys, school boy. Speaking of stereotypes, if you guys need one, Go I, on. I got one. I've got Sony's. I've got CB's. I've got <laughs> all kinds of stereotypes. I, was I, I, was like, I have a real question for you. That was a great quality dad joke, by the way. Thank you. Uh, He's a dad. No, so <laughs> I always ask, uh, well, I have asked in the past, like, nurses or healthcare workers, like, what's the most realistic healthcare TV show? Grey's Anatomy, yeah. Scrubs, whatever, whatever. Right. They always say Scrubs. Hmm. What's the most realistic lawyer show? And why is it suits? Because there's quite a few of them no, now. Why is it suits? God. I feel like Suits is like the Grey's Anatomy. Like that's what everybody wants it to be. Oh, dude, I feel no. like Everyone's it's not that. I went to I went to law school for a year with Jerry O'Connell, who is kind of a B-list actor known for his first role as a child was in um, what's that Goonies movie? Yeah, the Goonies. He was in the Goonies. What was that Goonies movie? So I, I was trying to remember the name. <laughs> And then, and then as he got, and then he, as he got older, he became kind of like this B-lister, and he was in this show. Um, Who's that guy that died at the uh, sh the Chateau Marmont? Uh, he overdosed. He he, I don't he even drug, know what that is. He, he uh, we're not cultured here. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, You're anyway, like, Belushi, Belushi's oh. brother. Oh, okay. Jim Belushi, John what? Belushi, one what of the two. Yeah. He was in a show with him, and it was called. Uh, Jake, do you have autism? I don't think so. Okay. Like, why do you know where he died? Like, <laughs> a, he was on the seventh floor room, John 719. Anyways. <laughs> look, this is just things I know, okay? He was he was in my law school program for a year, um, and uh, he was on a show after that. I forget what it was called, but it was pretty good. And that was honestly pretty realistic. And we all asked him, like, look, are you just here for a role? And he's like, no, no, I want to become a lawyer. And then two semesters in, he, like, leaves and then all of a sudden this show comes out where he plays a lawyer. And I was like, 
You got us all, Jerry. I you swear to God, all. if you don't know the name of this show, I've never been so verbally blue balled in my entire life. Right? He's like, oh, it's actually really good. This show's super accurate. It's, uh, I don't know. I don't name. remember. Here's the guy and his dead brother's name and where he died. Here's every coordinating piece to this puzzle, but the name of the show. It was, I, look, I'm going to have to look it up. If you're going to press me on this, I'm going to have to look it up. I think it was called, it was, they were defense attorneys. Helpful. Can you look it up? 50, 50 shot. <laughs> what, yeah, I just my phone on me. Dude, you were doing great. I was just going to let you have it. <laughs> look, Jerry O'Connell, Defense Attorney Show. What other movie name. other than that one is one where, as he's saying, where you're like, man, they just got it. That is how the courtroom. And, 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 and why called, is it my cousin then? It's called The Defenders. <laughs> the Defenders. Yeah. yeah. I it's was, like was going to say The Defenders. Speaking of The Defenders, Ooh. what's your superpower? Oh, yeah. We haven't oh, done yeah, a superpower do in a here, while. Oh, it has been a tick since we've done an Avengers episode. It's been a episode. while. I like this. So how does this game work? Uh, so you you a pick a superpower, okay. and we pick the downside. Any superpower? Any superpower yep. you want. We'll tell you if it's been used or not. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it is slim pickets right now. Okay. Yeah. Um, the ability to control water. Oh, he's a water bender. That's not been taken. That is not. That is actually a really cool power. Yeah. Told you. That's because I'm an Aquarius. This is that's why. Oh, Jesus Christ! I'd like to be an, a Taurus bender, please. <laughs> Just, I want to be able to shape shift cows. <laughs> I thought you were like talking about astrology signs. <laughs> I, I, I am too. too. That's what, I was like, <laughs> he, he, he's an Aquarius. He wants to do water. Fuck it, I'm gonna do cows. Yeah. Okay, if someone could control water, what yeah. would be the greatest offset on that? I mean, can you control ice too? Because if you, as soon as you leave, well, yeah, this no, water is water. Screwed. Water's water. Yeah, water. water's water. Water H two O. Hard, hard water. Right. Air there's, water. There's water. a there's a piss side effect here. Somewhere. That's what I was thinking. It's like, does the pee? I'm trying to think of how that would work, or a downside that's just completely annoying with the ability to control water. Sodium water. God, that's actually a. You're welcome, boys. God, mm. God damn it. lawyers. I know. <laughs> right? That's a fucking. good offset for that. I know. Fire. <laughs> you're all with <laughs> you catch on fire anytime. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you're just so lying. your first action has to be dousing yourself. <laughs> yeah. You can only shape shift water while you're on fire. Yeah. So yeah. you have to constantly make the decision to save your own life or save whoever you're trying to help. <laughs> the second the power is used, and then he just ignites. That's actually there a really go. good one. Because then he has to put himself out, as you're saying. Yeah. He's like, oh, this hurts too much. He puts himself out. You look like crispy. Right. Oh, oh God. After about an, a minute you'd be, you'd be crispified <laughs> my uh my offset was just going to be mildly annoying it's like you're all, you can never be hydrated you're just always thirsty like he, goes right through me you can he's just constantly hung over <laughs> yeah there you go just that constantly would, just deathly dehydrated yeah like it's that hard like it is a hard morning of drinking Ugh. And you wake up and it's that two day hangover. Yeah. That's every time. You got that split. It feels like somebody put an axe in the middle of your forehead. The second you do it. And it can yeah. be a little or a lot, but the more you do it, the harder that headache is. Yeah. I, Ironically, I, I, honestly, enough, I wouldn't even seconds. want to control water if that was the case. Yeah. After five seconds, you're just like, dude, I don't I'll give a fuck anymore. <laughs> Jesus, just yeah. die. I, don't I care. mean, that's. My kid you, fell in the pool. He can only control uh, water that's inside of his body, like <laughs> that he has readily available. So then he does get hung over when the water leaves. Yeah, there you go. So like the more water you need to use, the more hung over you are the entire time. He's just streaming your tears. Out. Just a little bit of kidney failure. <laughs> You're like, God, I've been, this I've been fucking saving sucks. too many Fine, people. Yeah. You're like, oh no. After a week of being on the offenders, you're just jaundice. Oh, it happened quick. <laughs> just hating life, Mr. Brandon. You just did an RPG video. I did. A you just helped me with it. It, it, was, it was a blast. Uh-huh. I didn't even was, mean to do that. That was, no, was I'm real. So sorry. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm kidding. G-Van, don't even put that in there because I don't want Ryan, Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> yeah, Ryan's Reynolds. Sewer slides. Yeah. Sewer I still slides. like sewer slides. Sewer. That's my favorite thing to say now. <laughs> <laughs> it needs to be a shirt. It's just a sewer. And it's a kid like, wee. <laughs> 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 Spike pit at the bottom or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you fired an RPG. We found out those had. I didn't think how much ass those had on them. Yeah, it's a rocket. It's a it's a powerful rocket. It's a fast, fast fucking moving rocket. Like punching through fifty five gallon drums. Like it was 
nothing. That was what surprised me. So, like, for those who don't know, it's not like the fucking movies where, you know, like, you have the 1984 Red Dawn that just has the... And it's, like, super slow. It's like wi- a, like a wire-guided fucking bottle rocket. Right. It's pull the trigger, boom. You just hit the fucking wall 300 meters away. Like, it's, it's real fucking fast, and it has... It has ass behind it. You've seen the videos where guys get hit by the blowback on those. Like they yeah. Oh, yeah. step in the wrong place at the wrong time. The person doesn't check. Yeah, back Black. blast, not clear. Not yeah, not clear. Uh, you learn that key phrase a lot of the time <laughs> with AT4s, any uh, recoilless rifle system or yeah. rocket system. You have to always look backwards because it will kill. <clears throat> what is the, I forget how close. It's a ways. There, there's always the, there's these videos coming out of Ukraine where like people are using RPGs because they've seen their buddies do it and they've never shot it or they don't understand the concept of back blast. I saw a dude like trying to fire it up over a trench and like rested it on his bicep, and it was just a real fucking ripped. They're all wearing like these thick winter jackets, so it's really yeah. kind of hard to see like the actual damage from the drone that is recording them or whatever. But it looked like a real limp sleeve after that. He got hit with the back blast on his arm. Yeah. yeah. So, like, his arm he was tried to use like, it like a buttstock. He tried to, like... <laughs> Not great. <laughs> yeah. Street fire it like that? Basically, yeah, like over a trench. Oh. And, uh, yeah, no, that's not a good idea. It may be spooky season, but you don't want to scare people with your scraggly beard. Today, we are brought to you by Manscaped.com. Who has taken a step from the ball of wieners? To bring your face the cleanest shave it has ever seen, brother. So this season, there's no toil or trouble. It's just Manscaped. Manscaped's all-new handyman is the best way to get rid of that stubble. Featuring compact design and skin-safe technology. It was designed to give you a smooth finish without traditional technology disadvantages get the sweetest treat this season by going to manscape.com and using code unsub to save 20 percent and free shipping and for my wolf man out there there's the manscape beard hedger pro kit it has everything to tame your mane ding that's 20 percent off and free shipping at manscape.com using code unsub for a look sweet as candy, get yourself a handyman from manscaped.com. I saw American RPGs for the first time and didn't know that was a thing. Wait, what? Apparently, America makes RPGs. Yep. PS or is no the one idea. I shot. Is it PSL? Oh, LR it one? Whatever. <clears throat> yeah. Airtronic makes them. Yeah. Oh. What? America <laughs> makes RPGs exclusively for dropping off in other. That's as American as it wars. gets. Right. Yeah. It's like, dude, that's this is American. It came in a dope ass case. Whoa. So like, hey, that shit they already use. Yeah, just make more of that painted army green. Send it over. <laughs> that, that is, that's literally your what I tax use. dollars at work. <laughs> Holy shit! We and, actually do that. Well, I love I love uh, the the differences in between the Russian ones and ours because it's so stupid. It's so ours fucking work. stupid. Both work. The problem is our, ours is literally a 100% clone. It yeah. is a copy, like through and through. Just doesn't have the Russian markings. Like right. it is a 100% clone. They're like they'll but know how added, to use this. Literally, yeah, that's why yes. we do it. And the ammo's everywhere. But the uh, we we dropped we added, T78s and we added quad rails to I everything see, for no fucking reason. I saw yours had no, quad rails, at. and I was like, why does it have? It's got to be rails? modular. I wanted to put yeah. like little like red dots it's all be over modular. it. Modular. That's what's up. There's eight red dots on it. And you know, like a bipod. I prefer the uh, the ACOG on my RPG. I s- swear to God, if you can just use the word modular, you will get a government contract. It doesn't matter what it is. You I'm start growing square potatoes, <laughs> modular fucking potato. The DOD will buy all of them. I'm selling um, <laughs> but, but, modular continue. techniques on how to defeat thermal devices. Hundred percent. Oh yeah, guaranteed. Yeah. Is that? Oh, that's. <laughs> Wait, when's when that, is coming, that out? coming out? It's coming out on Sunday on YouTube. So if this is coming out Saturday on YouTube, <laughs> so it'll be it'll be live shortly hereafter. Oh, so we, we can't, can't, talk we about can't it. spoil Fuck. it, but it is really good. Can we say at least the top? We, we we can talk about it a little. Bit. Oh, can yes. we? Yeah. Okay, yeah. We have a small audience base. Tens of people watch it, so we're content. <laughs> <laughs> small hide by especially with these guys on ill tank. Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> oh, well, no one's gonna watch this episode. We haven't understood like. Do you don't talk about Fight Club rule here? Okay, okay. so they, these guys are cool, okay. probably. So make sure you go on con, 
comment on their video. Be like, well, it'll be live it on first. Quarter Digital, and then it'll come out Sunday on Quarter Crew YouTube. Oh, see, we're good yeah. then. There you go. Boom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Talk yeah. about, dude. Oh, this. Wait, first. What do you think? Okay, what? you know Predator. <laughs> I know this is an awkward we have, pause. We yeah, have told the yeah, fucking he used, yeah. he used the shark hand. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, the shark hand came out. He locked up with fear. <laughs> He's like, Jaws is coming at me. <laughs> Predator. You know Predator's thermal vision back in the day. Well, yeah. any of it. And then Arnold, he's like, I'm going to throw some mud on. And he's fucking. Right. How do you think that fares in today's technology but, and war? Reef IR is like nice thermal. Yeah. How do I think it fares? Yeah. How much mud do you think you need in order how for it to actual? I, I feel like just because you're asking me, it's like not much. <laughs> I don't like, <laughs> or well, it's a ton. I feel like what? I'm going to be disappointed. Or it's a ton. Or it's a ton. It's either like 18 inches or literally a, some sunblock. One of the, <laughs> nowhere in between. He's right. <laughs> you're in fact totally right. And we discovered that it is an incredibly small amount of mud. That it is, is necessary. Terrifying. Like, you, <laughs> can we yeah, have like, in depth? Because it is yeah, like, we were like, oh, this is Jake was like getting covered in the mud. He's just a pig. He's just rolling around. He's yeah. like, cover me. We have Harley Morrison just like covering my him. mud man. <laughs> mud good buddy. Mud, man. A good mud, mud buddy. buddy. There mud there buddy. <laughs> Every mud man needs a good mud buddy. <laughs> so it works. They're just putting him. He's getting a pace. And we look up and I'm like, oh, God, what the Fuck, because yeah. Jake like rested by some trees. I was like, "Hey, hey, ever, what the fuck?" They look when he's by the trees. Nothing. You have Finn, who is a bright <laughs> white dot, like yeah. recording a tree. I walk over. I'm like, "Hey, um, I don't want to ruin it," because he was like, "Don't tell me." I was like, "But, uh, um, yeah. Nick, come here." He's like, "What is it?" I was like, "Fucking working, like." Really fucking good. Like, it was a little freaky because, well, as soon as uh, when he first started walking out into the mud, I could see where where it was like splashing up on your your legs, like yeah. your pant legs, and where it was splashing was immediately disappearing on thermal. I'm like, oh fuck, this is gonna work, isn't it? Yeah, and this is today's you know some of the best <clears throat> thermal <throat> devices that you can get currently. We had like four different brands, but it was all pretty nice shit. Yeah. <laughs> Twenty to thirty thousand dollars worth of thermals. <laughs> looking for this dude, he hid. <laughs> just the hide and seek was the stupidest part. It was so fun though. I'm so glad we got to do that because, because everyone that. with thermals on was just like, "No, we got to move to the next area." <laughs> and Jake's like, "I and literally at that point I had learned him. to hide my eyes in my you mouth." See him. So he was I, no. bro to that fucking chair. He was to that chair. Everyone decided like, "No, he's not here," and kept walking. Yeah. And I was like, Calder, Calder, you got to turn around. And they're like, what the fuck? Yeah. The dog ran. <laughs> That's the only yeah, reason. my dog found this me. This is yeah. some shit like the government's going to tell you to take this down. So we're <laughs> going we're, to we're gonna sell modular quad rail mud. To, <laughs> it's going to be filled with mud. And in an emergency, you just break in case of emergency. And it'll automatically get mud cold. Block it's put some chemical in there. quality mud. Yeah. It's mud, it's mud block, but like with a little cooling pack inside of it. So it's super cold. Right. Your, yeah. Dude's literally selling bricks out of fucking Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> Minecraft bricks. Yeah. It's like, here we go. And it'll attach to a quad rail on your primary rifle. And you just take that around <laughs> with you in case there's thermals. Threat of thermals. You just. This is going to be like new border patrol it. issue. Like. But why are all these Mexicans covered in <laughs> fucking mud now? This is super weird. <laughs> Just hot mud backs. Goddamn mud backs. <laughs> twenty years. Twenty years. Yeah, from twenty now. years. That's the new name that's coming back. She's like, oh no. <laughs> Nick's like, I can't say that joke. <laughs> but yeah, it was amazing. It, it was crazy. Everyone's mind was blown of how easily the tech was defeated, and to learn Predator acts like Arnold was telling the truth. Yeah, which I thought was a total lie. And we've been doing this these series of experiments on Corridor Crew, and uh, this was just the most recent one. And this one, I think, by far shocked me the most. It changed the video the drastically because he was thought he was going to have to be <laughs> in this mud hut. <laughs> I, bought, I bought a snorkel system. <laughs> <laughs> and, and about 20 thermal blankets because I was prepared to cover myself in thermal blankets with nothing but a snorkel face on with a hand signal for life to be covered in mud. <laughs> that would have been really mean if we did that and just covered you in mud. You just have a little snorkel and then just wave like smelling salts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
That would have sucked. And then we tell him, it's like, oh, it worked with the like the small layer. We just wanted to see you get completely covered. Yeah, yeah. that would have been... Maybe you should have done that. <laughs> God, what's, <laughs> what's some other military equipment that's just super easily overcome by bullshit? Well, Dude. that's uh, that's a real leading question there, Nick. <laughs> yeah, Nick. Uh, what? <laughs> no, what? Leading? What? Yeah. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking. Fed alert. <laughs> I, 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 I do want to come back to this uh, RPG thing, though, because that's shocking. But that they oh, use yeah, no, that's not government. This is why I think the like the military's rifle should be the Galil. That should be the U.S. military's new bold statement. Weapon. Yeah, I don't necessarily disagree. I love it because it's the per- it's so for like that type of situation, it's the perfect weapon. Yeah, it runs in every way. Well, so it's it's an. AK. They're already familiar with the the operating system, and it's it's in NATO ammo type. Well, so. I'm saying everybody's familiar with the operating system because when you look at the Galil Ace Gen Two on the left side of the gun, if you're holding it, it's AR controls. There's a thumb safety. And then on the other side, it's AK controls, and then it's got a SCAR charging handle, which is the best out of AK or AR. So it's like all three combined into one with only the best aspects. Mm. That's what should be used. But I, no, we're gonna, I like them. I like a Galil. No, no, we're going to give it to I, Sick. I it's liked fun. it more than... Yeah, jeez. Don't get me fucking started. <laughs> uh <laughs> I, I liked the Galil Ace way more than I thought I would. I kind of always resented him for a while because it's just like, oh, God, you're taking something, adding a bunch of rails to it and shit like that, and uh, IWI. But then, like, I fucking bought one, and I'm like, oh. First time I actually, like, ran it, ran it. I'm like, God damn it. Okay, this is this is nice. I don't... <laughs> nobody look at me. Well, don't, don't record me saying it, but my, yeah, it's nice. Does it have a million parts like the AR? Nope. It's an AK no, it's, on the inside. It's, it's literally, literally an AK. AK. Okay. Yeah. It's the same bolt, bolt carrier, everything. Like it's just an AK operating Here's system. Here's my question. Like how much money? Cause like what, what's the Galil up for? Like 1600 bucks, I think. Something like Stock. that. Stock. Like how much money would you have to spend to get an AK of like comparable quality to that? Like out of the box. Do you want, it depends on what you want to do with it. Like what, what, what do you mean by comparable? Quality? I just mean like. I don't know much about pricing for AKs. I feel like the Galil is like... Like a bone stock gonna, AK? Yeah, like you're going to have to spend a lot of money to get something as... Uh, no, you about the same price. Does it weigh a thousand for, for a really pounds? Good AK, for a really good AK, yeah, same thing. Yeah. Does it weigh a thousand pounds like every AK ever? Man, you need to get it's some not, better AKs. We need to hook you up, buddy. Bad. I'm down. I just... I even went into Montekima and I was like, hey, is there like a light AK you can make for me? And they were like, well... But I understand the bolt. A thousand and pounds, meaning seven. So, oh, that's still pretty heavy. Like six point nine pounds, something like that. Yeah, it, it'll get to you. I'm saying, if you take a scar on like an elk hunt, it'll probably get to you. I wouldn't know. It gets, it gets <laughs> to the elk more. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> the, one, of, one of us walked away from the field of battle yeah, that day. I, I just love Brent taking. He's like, I need the Scar Twenty S for this hunt. I was like, I just thought it was cool because was they, they asked me if I wanted a rifle there, and I'm like, Nah, you know what? I'd, I'd rather use one of mine just for pride purposes, whatever. So I put the uh, EOTech uh, one to ten Voodoo on it, like kind of tricked it out a bit, and then I was not informed um, ahead of time that I was going to be hiking five miles a day roughly with it that was really cool I, want I, I actually did enjoy it it wasn't it wasn't really that bad but it definitely was heavier than i needed yeah yeah your ak's Next and time, everything you're shoulder gonna... shoulder mounted barrett <laughs> mount a pair of antlers up top and just walk with it on your shoulder <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's an elk <laughs> goose Ooh. just explodes the fucking elk yeah that, that's wasted some good meat there which, Most of the time, by the way, if anybody would like some elk meat, I have quite a lot. Yeah, of done and done. No, yeah. when you're actually for rifles in combat, you're just chances are unless you're going like this, you're just gonna have it the low ready. Yeah, yeah. On your <clears throat> your mag holster, you rest whatever you can on it, so it holds a, a majority of the weight, and then you just walk like this. Yeah, and but it's still. I mean, and then you go like this. And with the AKs, I'll you cradle it. You yep. just cradle it with the uh, oh magazine. AR. You do too. too. I've, I, yeah. You get real good at being lazy. Well, in <laughs> combat. You get super good at being as lazy as possible. <laughs> I stripped my gun down to like the minimum so I could. I didn't you're, have to you're not being lazy. Hand. You're conserving energy to be more combat effective. No, totally. Done. I mean, well, yeah. And I mean, as soon as you start exerting yourself, sprinting, ducking, squatting, covering. I sure you don't do that notice about, it when you're getting shot at. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> None of the tired goes in your brain. Not one time was like, I'm really exhausted. I wish it would stop. You're just like, fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> This is gonna. I'm gonna die. Today is probably that day. 
is Eli Dye's day. Oh my God, do you want the best sleep in the world, you know? Well, I can tell you the greatest bed and mattress product in the world. It is from ghostbed.com, you know? Today we are talking to myself and Mexican version of myself to talk about the great deals at ghostbed.com. Every mattress has 20 year warranty. You can try out for 101 night. If you don't like it, send it back. No hard feeling. In the one of the best parts of the ghost bed is the cooling technology. Senor, I know what you're thinking. Por que? Si. Cause if you're like me and you're in Texas, the nights are hot and you need the cooling technology. See, Ghostbed also offers all the bundles. See, you don't even really have to think about it, senor. Just choose from four of their mattresses and you got a bundle, senor. So whether you need the mattress or the frame or you want it all, like the cooling pillows or the sheets, you can get the best bang for your buck. That's right. Right now, if you use unsubscribe at ghostbed.com slash unsubscribe, you get 50% off everything. Everyone loves discount to that value. So very big. That is half. Go buy the best bed you can with ghostbed.com. Uh, actually, on a serious note, all of us use Ghostbed now. It is all the rooms here at Unsub, my bedroom, the pillows, the sheets, everything is Ghostbed. You spend 30% of your life in a bed. Upgrade y'all stuff and save 50% while doing it. Go check them out. They're a fantastic company. And we support them. Code unsubscribe. Go. 50%. Yeah. Like <laughs> Speaking of which, we were talking about it earlier at lunch. I have never heard the story about how you got your Purple Heart. Did have none of you? No. No. I don't know if I've, you guys I've, have. I've had the pleasure of hearing it, but it was many years ago. Okay. This was Patrol 2. I want to say it was 2. 2. Okay, yeah, this is the second mission. Oh, God. <laughs> first mission, I remember first mission, like, we pulled up, and it was like, tink, 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 tink. I was like, oh, this is war. So, like, dismounted it into gunfire. Oh. We took it. And I was like, I was like, oh, fuck, okay, this is what we're signing up for. Got it. So mission two, I can tell you exactly. There was a fucking school right here. There was a courtyard for the school. We were pushing down. I don't know what road it was. Uh, this it was, is in Iraq, right? Yeah. Not and in America. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is <laughs> Detroit. So you're we're talking about gunfire in school. And, uh, just immediately. <laughs> you're going to have to be way more specific here, Eli. <laughs> so we had, um, it was a day patrol and we were dismounted. We were actually taking, this is why we stopped taking strikers into um, non-main MSRs. So like senators, these roads aren't going to mean anything. But you have the main MSRs where you drive to bases or move uh, units and troops. So we would just stick on those after this because those little city blocks, that's where they plant all the IEDs. You are not overwatching everything every single time. So they're digging up holes. They light tires up, melt the pavement, dig it up, build giant IEDs, plant giant IEDs so I can melt the pavement back down. Never would know. So Comforting. we're on our patrol peaceful so far i'm on the right side um other teams on the left and we have a striker right next to me mgs striker which is the 105 or the 125 <coughs> tank strikers this is the first we were the first ones with the mgs tank strikers in all of iraq we're running walking down and this is in front of me and beeson's behind me guy pops out with an ak and just <laughs> fires i get down on the knee i'm like see he didn't think it was too heavy <laughs> Yeah, he, he popped around, complained also really bad. Yeah. <laughs> He's a like, god, it's so heavy. Eli's, and then he started shooting. Eli's first thought as soon as he saw that guy pop around the corner, like, I bet his arms are really tired from carrying. <laughs> like, he, he said it's uh <laughs> Jake's like, I hate all these guys are just talking shit, but I'm telling you, man, it's, it'll those will run you down. You I said threw it's a all, shark hand at him. <laughs> I think it's because I was a cross country runner. So like, in track, like every extra weight you have is a waste. The track and combat, exactly the same thing. <laughs> running's involved, I guess. Uh, yeah, running's involved. <laughs> and there's medals. Um, it's like, it's exactly just like combat. In fact, practically, I should probably be telling this story. Yeah, you, you, you take over. <laughs> so Homeboy thing. pops out. Do, 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 do. I fucking, we return fire really quick. And I felt something hit me in the leg. Round, traveled down the wall, hit 
fucking hit me in the leg. So immediately I'm like, doo doo, like, fuck, I see blood. And I grab the back of my leg because I'm like, I'm going to bleed out. My biggest fear. Just bleeding out for whatever reason. That was always how I was like, ah, this is how I die. So I was like, oh, it's good. It's good. A little condensant. Before I even did that, I was backing up because I felt it. Beast is like, whoa, because I was like, I just got shot. <laughs> so I'm backing up and shooting. And Ennis is here. Ennis is pushed out a little. I'm next to him shooting uh, right over him. And I start backing up with Ennis. Beast is like, back up. What? You're about to get in my fire. Boom. Fucking just the loudest explosion ever. Ennis thought an IED went off next to us. I look over. Sergeant Cope is driving the MGS striker. He's like, you guys are good. Did you just shoot that man with the tank? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> obliterated that entire segment of the wall. And that dude. Were they shooting out of the tank? What kind of? A 105? Oh Enough. Yeah. <laughs> Enough. Yeah. That was the very first. A lifetime supply. Some would say. <laughs> Some would say. And I, uh, that was, I want to say, the very first MGS round ever fired in all of Iraq. Next to me the at the dude shot that shot <laughs> All at once. Ennis thought an IED went off. So you guys are just, wee. It's just completely fucked. Oh, yeah, because it was like the camera is how close the tank round is. Oh. Yeah, it was overpressure. Yeah. It was a lot of overpressure. So it's oh. like, boom, boom, just fucking gone. Just everything gone. We pull back into there. I'm like, oh, okay, okay. I'm not bleeding out. It just went in and stopped. We're good. Everyone's like, you're good, you're good. And they're like, Quavis got shot, blah, blah, blah. It's Where'd you actually get shot? Like, right, though. Right there. Bonk. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Nothing. And um, didn't so, exit. Mm, no, no, it literally went in and stopped. I got meet. super fucking lucky. Jesus like, Christ. Went and stopped. When I went like this, bullet got knocked out. Really? Wow. Yeah. What the fuck? I just oh, because it was a ricochet. Oh yeah, that's right. Rick yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. The world's biggest bruise the next day, though. Yeah. It wrapped around my whole fucking leg. But uh, well, you you got shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I went to the wrong aid station. That now. Add that to the story. So homeboy is fucking gone. We ex I remember like everyone's like, you got shot. Quays got shot. Walked around the corner. Smith's there. And they're like, oh, okay. Uh, you're good. I was like, yeah. And then my friends are like, huh, free license plates. Huh. That's all naturally we're worried about. We go in <laughs> and we push right, take an RPG. Uh, that one actually exploded. Uh, pushed around. We had like, that was, that turned into an eight hour, 10 hour gunfight that day. That was, we lost two dudes. Oh, fucking man. one, two, three, four. Five Purple Hearts that day. Jesus. Jesus. Mission two. Second mission. <laughs> Bro, that's when all of us were like, fuck. So I get back, go to the wrong aid station, so I didn't even get a day off the next day. They're like, because we just lost two that's dudes. Christ. Imagine That's the most government thing I've ever heard in my fucking life. Getting shot Imagine and getting a day getting off. getting shot and getting, I mean, you went to the wrong doctor, stupid. Go back to work. <laughs> <laughs> what? Because it was going back, and I remember we got back. Um, <coughs> we lost Gaudier. Shout out to Gaudier and Ham. So both of those, uh, that was first platoon and third platoon. And um, we cycled back. We got on base. I went to the other ace, because all this is going just with my company. So I go to, I think, like Charlie or Alpha Company, to their doctor real quick. I was like, well, I'll just go see their nurse if they can bandage me up real quick. And they're like, what are you doing here? I'm like, well, I... Uh, I they're like, why is your uniform all fucked up? Why aren't you using your own medic? I was like, well, I got shot in a mission. They're like, oh, my God, we're so sorry. <laughs> Dude, that, that, the switch of like, oh, shit, no. Yeah. Hey, hey, come, on, come here. We're so sorry. Uh, actually, go to like the, the doctor, doc. Let's take you to the hospital. So I walked to the hospital. Why is your uniform all fucked up? The bullet, mostly. <laughs> so naturally, it's like, go to the, the hospital. So I was like, okay, let's go to the chow hall first because I'm not bleeding out. So we ate chow because I haven't had hot chow in a while. We then go to the hospital, sit down. They fucking cut my pants over, do everything, do the paperwork. I leave. And I didn't go to my unit's aid station. So I had no paperwork other than I just got <laughs> So next day, we don't even get a day off. I remember our first sergeant was like, hey, we just, it's, this is going to happen. This is war. We just lost people. Like people got injured. We're going to have, it's going to be an off day on tempo. One hour later, hey, we have a mission. Sorry, <laughs> that was a lie. You guys have to clear this house. And I remember it was like all of us are now on edge. We are 
just like, fuck. So they're like, third platoon, go fucking clear this house. Walking up. And I'm like, God damn it. I'm like leading the file. And then we didn't know, I, I want to say first squad was always there. And we were about to round the corner of the front of this house. And then we hear a fucking machine gun go off. And I'm like, bro, and I just duck back. I'm like, God damn it, why? And we look, and then uh, Sergeant Tetra walks around. The He's like, sorry, I was opening the door. It was locked, so we used the saw. <laughs> I was like, you Whoa. fuckheads. We, oh, my God, I thought I just got ambushed again. I Holy love that sentence, shit. though. The door was locked, so I used the saw. <laughs> This is, I mean, whatever works. Pete got wrecked. Yeah. <laughs> we tried opening America. doors with 203s. <laughs> yeah. Good luck, anybody behind that Sorry. door. I'm more impressed that it was a try. <laughs> oh, it opened. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> no, you opened doors. <laughs> we tried with 203s. Those doors. didn't work. But yeah, that was the... That was the that was the two or three. So without, without proper paperwork mm-hmm. from the uh, medical, uh, how did how did you actually get the purple heart? The paperwork was submitted, everything like that. But I don't. You don't get a um, what are they? Uh, sick hall pass essentially. Yeah, a, a profile. <laughs> yeah, a profile. <laughs> like Kadoka when Kadoka got hit in the head and the helmet stopped it. Like he set up. He's like, what the fuck? He's like, I got shot in the head. Bullet rode the ridge out, popped back out, and oh. he went to the proper A station, had a few days off. I was like, you piece of shit. <laughs> I was like, oh, I didn't get that. Well, you still don't have to pay property taxes. So you got that going for you. That was pretty nice. The one thing I yeah. like about it. But yeah. Oh, yeah. When we tried to open doors with 203, that was the step like we were, I don't know. Was we thought standoff we were, distance? Or? We thought we were standoff distance. <laughs> so we were like, go. <laughs> it just hit the wall or hit the door and fell. And we're like, fuck. Let's go back a little further and try again. Thump. Well, <laughs> let's go to the next house. <laughs> right, Just, right. Good luck handling those grenades on the ground. <laughs> oh, they're fine. Go play catch. I don't know. Yeah, put it on the FBCB2. We'll just mark it and we'll move on. Mission success. Mission That's accomplished. Whatever you do, kids, just don't rotate it 30 times. I know. Just throw it at the wall. <laughs> Go deep. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Go deep. <no>. Oh. <laughs> Perfect Army. NFL spiral. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be a quarter. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, the running back's gone. <laughs> yeah. The funny part is that would never not be recorded as a war crime. Even though you guys didn't do it. It's like, oh yeah, I'm sure the kid just threw a 203 grenade at the other kid. Like, <laughs> well <laughs> oh, that was yeah, it's an actual story of what happened, what played out on that day. Like, uh oh. Yeah, sure. I'm sure his buddy grenaded him. Yeah, yeah. sure. Sure, Mahid. He's playing five hundred out there. <laughs> War. It's fantastic. Did you, did you see that? Oh, no. No, there was like one news article that came out a couple years ago where like somebody's grandpa has been just that he's had this mallet for opening walnuts like as long as this dude could remember. It's just, oh, it's grandpa's fucking walnut mallet. It was a fucking German stick yeah. grenade from World War II and no. it was live yep. the whole time. No. <laughs> what? He's just opening walnuts <laughs> with it on a rock. <laughs> dude, that generation was, that was probably in Iowa. Built different. Wait, it was just a dude? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is old potato masher? Yep. <laughs> that was like that. Uh, did you see the? Um, it was like a museum for I don't know if it was World War II vets hanging out. It was like people in the wheelchair. Did you see that? Which one? It's a World War II vet. It was just a video of like, hey, there's this museum and World War II vets are hanging out and they're like all in wheelchairs. But the camera stops. It, it cuts to like a dude's reaction because one of those old World War II vets, he's like wheeling around by himself and he's carrying a fucking tank mine. And the camera stops and like, why the fuck does this dude just carry an anti-tank mine on it? He's just this old World War II vet. It's like his security blanket. He's just wheeling around in his wheelchair. Carried it with me everywhere since 43. <laughs> wasn't live. I hope not. I don't know. Maybe. Oh my God. <laughs> well, why would you carry around a non-live yeah. anti-tank mine? Maybe What's he's like, is his comfort blanket because he dug so many up. He was like, look. That's what we're thinking. I mean, homeboy's fucking using a potato masher to open walnuts. <laughs> dude. That's fucking insane. Who wants better sex and to start having better sex right now? That's the best way to get started. Are you Canadian? I am for this ad read. <laughs> That's right. The best way to get started is go to adamandeve.com right now. Adam and Eve is offering 50% off from any item, plus free shipping, which includes rush processing. Like these. <laughs> also, it doesn't matter how much you spend or what you buy. 
Everything will be packaged discreetly, and you'll get that order fast. Don't wait. Better sex is just a click away. Go to adamandeve.com and use code UNSUB to save 50% off and get rush processing. God damn it. Okay, Nick, your it. video. Okay, which one? The one you... I can't... It's got to be uploaded this week. I can't tell it if this is if the podcast going up this week. Is this one going up this week? Yeah. Oh, shit. I can't, you can't tell, tell it, it yet. Why? Because it's... Oh, yeah. My video's right. going up. I, <laughs> sacrif- might get I sacrifice for the unsub podcast, Nick. Now it's your turn. <sighs> Do we get a teaser? God damn it. Teaser. I just want to know a just, little bit. All right, little, I'll tell you what. Just give me a little, little, little I'm just gonna give you, I'm going to give you the two titles that I'm working with, and you guys can okay. tell me which title is the best. You're all YouTube people, right? So okay. title number one, America's original gangster, or America's first gangster, or old man tells the British Empire to get off his lawn. Yes. That one. That one. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. And then you have a picture of Clint Eastwood. Get, get, get off my lawn, Clint Eastwood, with... Like the Queen, well, she's passed, but you know something representing the British. I stand Empire. by it, the Queen. Yeah, that's pretty red. Get yeah. off my lawn! Or you have like three, oh three red coats <laughs> running away. That's actually pretty good, Clint Eastwood, with the your gray. face. Oh, it's, it's you're already, you're it's photoshopped no, it's, on it. It's already in the video multiple times. <laughs> that <laughs> line, that cut of Clint, it's in the video like four times. Damn it! You can't All tell. Right, give me a time frame on this. Uh, April. 19th, 1775. Yes. Nice. Okay. All right. I have no idea. Well, um, old guy, grizzled veteran. I'm not going to tell you the whole story. Dude's a complete gangster. Was French and Indian War veteran or? King George, King George War prior to the French Indian War. Oh, wow. Okay. So basically the first version of the French Indian War. Yep. Veteran at 48. French and Indian War veteran at 58. Pontiac Rebellion veteran at 68. 78, the American Revolution. Fucking Paul Revere. Okay, this dude lived in Arlington, Massachusetts. Okay, Boston, like one if by land, two if by sea. Paul Revere takes off. Yeah. It's fucking Boston, Arlington, Lexington, Concord. The first battle is Lexington and Concord. Fuck, Paul Revere showed up at Homeboy's house in the middle of the night. He's like, the British are coming. And when the British showed up, he told him to get off his fucking lawn. <laughs> Just <laughs> 78-year-old grizzled veteran, two dueling pistols that he acquired during the Pontiac Rebellion because the previous owner, and I quote, died suddenly. <laughs> 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 goes out in his front yard <laughs> as 700 British soldiers are retreating back to Boston and just confronts them. Takes out three British dudes. Oh my God. Wow. Wait, 78 still, years old. I thought, wait, I thought Lexington Concord was 74. It was 75. 75. Okay. Yeah. And then the war was of like revolution was officially declared in 1776. Right. Wow. Which is when history began. Yeah. So then, uh, so then he also. <laughs> history began. At that day <laughs> is when history it's, began. It's the, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Ron Swanson quote. Like, history began in 1776. Everything before that was a mistake. <laughs> Science. So he also had a, uh, like this super gaudy French officer sword that. Oh, hell Previous yeah. owner died suddenly. Yeah. So he goes out in his front yard, musket, two <laughs> just pistols. Him just shooting people. It's like, he died suddenly. Musket, <laughs> musket, two pistols, French officer's sword. Shoots with the musket, kills, <laughs> kills a British guy. Whips out the two pistols, kills two more, pulls out the sword and charges at 78 years old. They, they shoot him in the face immediately. Okay, yeah. yeah. With a musket. Drops Did it. they stop to like chart, to form up? I don't know. He just got <laughs> shot in the face, falls died down, suddenly. goes to get back up. Didn't die suddenly. They charge him. They stab him with a bayonet 13 times. (laughs) And then they hit him in the head with the buttstock and leave him dead. (laughs) They take off, retreating back to Boston, because all the other men at men are, like, shooting from, like, the wood line and shit. And and he's just like, yeah, fuck you, (laughs) in his front yard. So four hours later, his corpse starts moving. And the town runs up there, oh, shit. He was just unconscious from getting hit in the head with the buttstock of the rifle. Christ. And he's, he wakes up thinking they're still around and starts loading his fucking guns again. So they take him to the hospital and <laughs> the doctor, so they get his family, they take him to the doctor and the doctor is like, dude's 78 years old in the 1700s. He Life was supposed to die. was like 28. No, it was 60, but fucking. Like, like being 108 now. Yeah. 
It's like, yeah, it's like a hundred in colonial years. Like yeah. dude wasn't ready to fall off of two steps, let alone get fucking bayoneted <laughs> 13 times and shot in the face. So that happens. He takes it to the doctor. The doctor is like, he's fucked. Like I'm not, get him off my table. He's dead. He's going to die. Just get him out. Well, guess how many living descendants this dude has at this point in time, living direct descendants from him at this point in time. Oh my God. Like, like right now? No, no. At oh. this point in time, he's okay. at the doctor. 20. No. No. Not even fucking close. 52. No. 100? Not even close. Not even close. 200? <laughs> 185 direct descendants. Between his kids, he has five generations beneath him oh at this point God. in time. You ever, it's colonial. This he's been fucking would, since he was 15. Right. You would just have having it. kids the entire time. Yeah, you had kids not out of like out of necessity to carry on your genes. Plus, he's literally a minute man. Right. <laughs> Damn. Oh. Anyways, I, 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 he's proud of that joke. He's like <laughs> a minute man. Uh, I, I see what you did there. Uh, anyways, so the doctor's like, "Well, I can't tell 185 grandkids. Fuck you, Grandpa's dead." So he's like, he does what he can, bandages him up, sends him home with the family to die. Right. Dude passes away February 3rd. Lived another 1793 year. 1793 or some shit. Oh Dude lived God. for 18 more years. Oh my God. Bro, grandpa's a fucking hard ass. How, do, just, you, how do you find these stories? I don't know. It's like, job. do people send them to you? Or yeah, you kind of. People are like, I kind of heard this one thing about this one guy, and then I got to figure out what all is actually true and yeah. what's not. You find yourself on <laughs> genealogy.com. Like, I was there for that one. That's okay. how I found out he had 185 living descendants. How long does it take you to like produce uh, you know, the research for an episode like that? Uh, it kind of just depends on the topic. Um, a lot of the time I'm lucky and all the work's done, and it's just like all the work was done by historians that have no sense of humor and don't right. understand the military. Right. So mil like military history is all taught from the perspective of the commanding officer that wrote the documents. And yeah. that's all the historians look at. Right. It's like, that's not what fucking happened. Yeah. <laughs> I promise you that's not yeah. what happened. Yeah. Let's deep like, dive. So then you get that's to the version of the story that sounded good to that guy's boss. <laughs> right. Exactly. So like, yeah. So I don't know. I kind of like read between the lines, actually listen to what the dude said compared to what the officers say. And yeah. How hard is it for, like, from 1776? Because those are those, like, I know doing research uh, even in the, like, Western, Wild was, West period was difficult. So for doing this, this dude was born in Charlestown, Massachusetts in 1696. And then he goes dark until he was, until 1721. He's like Jesus. He shows up. He what was, happened to him? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, there, between the a, time he taught the elders as a boy, between the time he comes back, they, what happened to him? Well, they, they wrote knows. a couple books about that guy. A couple, yeah. Yeah. a big one actually. It was a pretty best was a ever best seller. seller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. best seller. A lot you of got shot, a lot in the of face remakes. And a few times too. Kind of. <laughs> you did get stabbed. A few yeah, yeah. one yeah. was right. <laughs> <laughs> so it, 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 he just disappeared, and then I mean, he just, just goes like, dark. Like there's right no historical yeah, record. <laughs> like he was born, nothing happens, and then the next time he shows up in the historical records was when he got married to his wife in 1721, and then from there, the only time he pops up is. Um, when he, when he's the dad on a fucking birth certificate, which is a lot, right. dude is just plowing or fighting wars. That's he's it. replacing he's like, all the life he's taking. Did he his have crops, his wife, or he's killing people? How That's many all he wives does his whole did he life. have? Uh, he had two, but most of his kids were from his first wife. His right. first wife passed they, away they like died. later in yeah. life. Yeah. Um, how that, many kids? Did that was common up until I think he, eighty years. I think ago. he had ten kids with the first one, but he did it when he was like, you know. 25. Less than 30. He had 10 kids, and it's like those 10. He had five generations beneath him, so I great, great, great grandkids. It's like John, he John Cougar Mellencamp. Yeah. Wow. Dude's running like OG pyramid schemes. So like my <laughs> John Cougar Mellencamp was like a grandfather at 36 or some shit like that. Really? Yeah. Wow. No so shit. If even, you're dedicated, you can still do this. Even my dad. Still do even that. my dad's dad uh, <clears throat> had his first. His first wife died in childbirth. My <clears throat> uncle's his half brother, and that was only in 1938. Yeah, that, that didn't change for a yeah. I mean, as a recent event of like, hey, we can actually do something right. if about your wife it. starts bleeding out yeah. suddenly on the operating table. We're for so, the most part, it was just we're having such that home. pussies now. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's the way. Can I say that on this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you need to of course you that? can. Okay, because man. Yes, that's the line. Pussy. 
is the line. It's, it's, we've said it once or twice. You know what I mean? No, for sure. I mean, like, like not we're, built like they used to. Now, no. fucking triangular bayonets are a war crime. Homie took thirteen <laughs> of them and walked it off. <laughs> Back in my fucking day, <laughs> you're having to stab thirteen times. Like, I had a buddy. I had a buddy who was in the hundred and first, and he was at some event, and he was talking with a guy that was on Iwo Jima, and and he was like, "So tell me." What was it like to strangle an Iraqi? We strangled a bunch of Japs on Iwo Jima. And I was like, and he was like, um, well, sir, we uh, we attacked them from a distance. <laughs> it was like, we didn't exactly do that. Eddie Gallagher. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. 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 <laughs> until, until he was about to go to jail for life. And totally did like, hold on, hold on. That was a gangster story, too. Yeah. That was so gangster. Yeah. I, 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 fuck it. I remember reading it the first time. I was like, this sounds like horseshit. Because a sniper, and they're messing with his optics to stop him from doing it. I was like, day two of your optics getting fucked. Would you be like, which one of you fucks right. is fucking with my glass? Did you see what happened with Ed, Eddie Gallagher's on how that whole team got what the lawyers did? Only what I watched a podcast where he went into intricate detail on it about how the, he how he got off. Well, the lawyer fucking sent the the Trojan to track emails of the. That's what happened. It was the opposing counsel. I didn't hear that. You didn't know this? No. Oh, I, yeah. I don't, the, I don't the, think the, I heard the prosecuting. This one. The prosecuting. Yeah. They sent Can't a fucking. Do that. They sent a key uh, as a. It was yeah, it was a Trojan horse from a DOD email address to another DOD email address. So they could copy everything and see if they could get anything. So when that's so illegal. Oh oh yeah, because that's how they got off real quick. Because they brought it in. They're like, hey, what the fuck is this? You didn't know this? No, Jake? I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, bro. <laughs> they brought it to like the other IT, and they're like, yeah, no, they traced it back to. That the prosecuting prosecu counsel, and they're like, "Yeah, no, this is where it came from," and that's, that's why it fell yeah. apart. Did oh, you know that? Yeah. Well, I that reminds me of a different story. It's very. I don't similar. know why I'm surprised. <laughs> like, I don't know why I'm surprised. I just still sometimes I'm still surprised. Well, Navy hated him. There was one. Uh, there was one recently. It was a recent scandal, like last couple months, I think, uh, where they found out because of a spelling error. Uh, the DoD had been sending shitloads of top secret information to a third world country because of the email address. It was something like accounts or whatever at like some, a dot, dot mil. Right. And instead they were like M M L L or something like that. And it was just going directly to the fucking, like the government of a, some third world country. So I don't remember which one it was, but it was, Malaysia, isn't that how yeah. that works? It, it yeah. might have been something like that. Yeah, Burdistan, some guys just being awarded everything. It's like... I think it was some African country. The greatest country. intel officer we've <laughs> ever had. He's just getting like <laughs> awards. <laughs> They're like, how do you do it? He's like, years of operating. <laughs> You've got <laughs> mail. <laughs> Another one came in. <laughs> just handing it off. It's just printing him out. <laughs> Look, how did he do this? I He's Instead of mail, I did dot... Capital I L <laughs> or yeah. whatever it is. You just get a knock on the door. Why does Malaysia have Abrams blueprints? <laughs> oh my god. Dude, I'm still surprised you didn't know about the whole you have to read about the prosecutor. No, I, I mean, yeah, I, I know the, the the general details, but I don't I don't know those. Navy ones. hated him, so that was like they were mission was to one. get a Navy yeah. SEAL. They were like, we have to fucking crucify this dude. Crucify right. him. And then all that and it. Then the Trojan horse got leaked. They're like, hey, uh, they walked it. I remember, like, they just brought it in. They're like, hey, what's this? And they're like, right. And it, that dude didn't get in trouble, which is the most fucked up I part. I didn't know I couldn't right. do that. That's that's what I mean. There's really, that's how I got off. Probably. The military? He didn't get in trouble. Yeah, probably. Did not get in trouble. Right. Yeah. I the military it. is a whole other ballgame. It's this, it's this, it's this, like, the accountability doesn't necessarily apply unless you're. You know, some particular person in the in the circumstances. It's and that's why people get so pissed because it's like we're like. Well, mine is it's war. Like war, like shit happens in war. People expect it to be like this. Oh, and we still like for the most part, Americans getting shot. Like uh, some of the ROEs we were at was like, hey, you can't shoot unless they're pointing their gun and shooting at you. Evan, they can have guns. You can't do. Evan anything. put it the best. He said, "War is the most." 
unpolitically correct thing you can do to somebody else. <laughs> and I was like, that that's it. You, you nailed it. Yeah, there's kind of a solid agreement. Hey, we're uh we're gonna, we're gonna invade you. your country yeah. and kill if you stop anybody us, who tries you. to stop us. Right. But you compare that to like Man, reading on the Civil War, I was like, what are the blad- like bloodiest battles in America? And then you see yep. our death tolls during the Civil War. I was yeah. like, Jesus. Well, that's Antietam what, was like 30,000 so in one day. The Civil War, I'm going to get on a little history here. No, I, I'm about, I'm the, about Civil Civil War. the Civil War. It's the best bragging point ever. Look. Yeah, who's killed the most Americans? It, Americans. We yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're the best at it. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we did to ourselves. Yeah. That that's was, what we're what, gonna fucking do to you. That was the precursor. That was the precursor to the techniques, not the techniques, the tactics used in World War One. Mm. I mean, Robert E. Lee invented the the trench system when he when he had a when he had to defend Petersburg and Richmond, and he had a line sixty miles long, and it was spread apart. Through, there was one soldier three meters apart from Petersburg to Richmond. It's like, how do we defend this? Oh, well, let's just dig a hole in the ground and have people... That was the first time anybody did that. That in Fredericksburg with the, the brick wall, yeah. the stone wall. Yeah. Because they, they cleaned house. I think it was like the death toll there because they had to assault a hill. Right. Where we, uh, the, the like, general, like, Robert E. Lee and I forget who was also there at the time, but they had uh, artillery already set up. They had all their dudes behind, like, a literal stone fucking wall. And have a clear shot of an open field where they're having to cross a river, and then that was the river too. Up. Yeah, they were trying to get so, across a river and then into the town. The death the death toll for the uh, the Confederates was like three thousand, and I think for the Union it was like twelve thousand. It was yeah, yeah, yep. I can't wait to do a Ulysses S. Grant video. Oh, dude, it's the butcher, be so good. Grant the butcher. Wait, his nickname was so the butcher? Good. Yes, you did. Dude, so he's, now he's I know a, something. You he's know. a complete anti-hero. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, I, okay, dude, let's go. Well, I, 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 don't I, don't, know. I, don't, I haven't done all the work yet. Like, I haven't done the research. But, like, <laughs> my understanding is help. he was, like, a complete <laughs> fuck-up in officer so, school. Like, he was yeah. really good, but also a complete, like, that typical anti-hero of, like, I'm super talented. I'm just not going to fucking listen or do the right thing. And he, like, washes out and goes and starts working in his rich father's <laughs> leather tannery mm-hmm. for, like, a bunch of years. And yep. Abraham Lincoln is like, I need somebody that can fucking win a war. And they co- go and get this dude out of a leather factory. Yeah, he was in some leather factory in, like, everybody's Illinois. Ass. So he cut his teeth on Vicksburg because mm-hmm. Vicksburg yeah. was this very weird position in the south it's it's on the it's on the mississippi and you can't really get to it at at that time you couldn't i don't know if you've ever been to that part of mississippi huge i love going there well no but like there's the mississippi river (laughs) gets gets bigger and wider and the the swamps around it get more intense the further south you go and so they were trying to get to vicksburg so that they could split the confederacy in half and the whole they spent like 18 months trying to take this town like they came at it from every which angle they had like flotillas that would go through the swamps they tried to do they tried to build bridges they tried to do everything in their power and eventually nobody could do it and then eventually grant did it and then they're like yeah you hey you you the guy yeah i i know like there's rumors about you being a drunk or whatever and like not you know not having any ambition or whatever i don't know just come to washington drunks get shit done and he and he shows Science. up in Washington in like his oversized dirty duster, and there was a hotel that all the people would show up at, and he just showed up at this hotel in like this duster, and nobody even recognized him until he wrote his name on the like sign-in sheet, and then uh, everyone realized it was like the Ulysses S. Grant, and then I mean, look, he did what he had to do. One of his techniques, though, was just simply. Well, you know all those guys that like McClellan and all the guys who came after him yeah. weren't using, who are perfectly trained, and there's like 150,000 of them defending D.C. Yeah, bring them down, bring them down, and and basically that's what he did. He just got the veteran soldiers, and, and he was like, and "Hey, these guys." They were so fucking- well provisioned and trained and organized that like he knew. And at that point, it was getting late in the war. The South couldn't resupply men. And they had these, you know, conscription armies that were running around the South. Like, basically, if you were any military-aged male and you weren't fighting, they would literally take you and, and conscript you and make you fight. Um, and, and so they didn't have any men, and Grant knew that. And so he became, his nickname, at least from the Southern perspective, became the Grant the Butcher because he would just send people at it until it was over. Yeah, and that's that basically and what happened. He, he was one of the only generals who actually had balls 
from the union because there was like uh, McClellan and like Burnside and just a bunch of these other generals that just yeah. sucked. They yeah. were like <sighs> Hooker. What, what the, sa- the South Which is lacked. where hookers come from, by the way. Yeah, General Hooker. Yeah. Wait, for real? Yeah. Because <laughs> he was a he was a big prostitute fan. <laughs> he said, yeah, yeah, eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow we die, that whole thing. Like he was like No, I don't know we're that. Gonna bring in a bunch of, <laughs> we're gonna bring in a bunch of we're gonna bring in a bunch of we're gonna bring in a bunch of and then the guys will like have a good time before they go to battle the next day. Fun fun fact, after Grant took a bunch of soldiers from defending DC, you know who summoned an army from his state and took it to DC to defend the White House for a minute? A militia. Cassius Clay. Cassius. Yeah. Did he? He was, he was back that. from Russia at this point, and he uh, he like got a Kentucky militia and marched him up to the White House to just stand guard over the just White House. Randomly, Forrest Gump sitting out of history. <laughs> Dude, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's so good. Right. He is the Forrest. Uh, you did a whole episode on. Yeah. It. Yeah. Dude, that guy. This is so many just hard ass badass. Yeah. I could not picture that in this day. Like fucking. Everything goes to shit, and it's like, they'd be like, come on, guys, let's go defend the White House. Right. Like, oh, man. I got really mad after a comment about, like, a tank, similar to the F-16 one, but it was like, well, what's it going to do against an Abrams tank? And it's like, okay, I mean, just off the top of my head, I think America's got, like, 7,500, 8,500-ish Abrams tanks. We're, let's go to magical fairy tale land where they're all working. Yeah. Yeah. They're not, but let's just say they were. <laughs> magical Literally fairy tale land. Magical are. fairy tale land, again, yeah. they don't need fuel. They just run on magic. Yeah. They don't need maintenance. Nothing ever breaks. Right. The crew is robots. They don't need food or supplies or a break or to go to the bathroom. Thank God America's but small. It's magical. Yeah. Okay. Completely magical. If that was the case, I did the math. You would have one Abrams tank to cover 750 square miles <laughs> to cover America. It's <laughs> like, even with magic on your side, it's fucking, how many backhoes are in 750 square miles? I mean, <laughs> there's literally a ranch in Texas that's bigger than the state of Rhode Island. Yeah, it's fucking ridiculous. Wait, okay, I want to know more about this private warships. <laughs> yeah, no, it's totally. Was, they did thing. it in England, too. In, uh, like, uh, just think about, like, privateering. Dunkirk, yeah. Privateering was yeah. a big thing. Yeah, privateering. Like, Dunkirk, when all the guys were, oh, fuck, were, yeah. were stuck there, they were like, hey, Englishmen, whoever owns Anybody's a, got a boat, boat please fucking Literally come to anybody with a boat. Motherfuckers we with you. boats, come get the British soldiers. Which well, has a rad story. Douglas really Botta's up in the air fighting Germans. And they, you know, like early 1800s, all that shit. Like, dude, they were like privately owned warships. Like, ah, uh, fuck. There was also one. Um, yeah, it's privateering. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. You're, you're a, basically a pirate, but you do it with a legal permission from a particular country. And so basically they say you can Black attack water. anybody in the sea. Basically, yeah. you, you can attack anybody as long as it's not us. Yeah. So PMCs. Well, I mean, that's how like pirate hunting and shit work too. Or like that's what some like what some countries deemed pirates were like, oh, you, they just like got the thumbs up from the that's British, the from Buccaneers. the East India Trading yeah. Company yeah. Oh, well, to go a, fuck a up French whatever else they want. Vessel. Yeah, that's. That's a yeah. It's a pirate. Yeah. Right. And private That's why America imagine, doesn't use a goddamn metric system. It's fucking pirates. <laughs> imagine getting a imagine getting a privateering contract from the British East India Trading Company. Not even from the British government, but like the trading from company. them. They're like, look, they control the sea and all the trade in it. I mean, yeah, you have our permission. It's fine. Just go out there and like disturb a couple of Frenchmen. It's fine. And then the buccaneers were known like the term buccaneer comes from the French Football sailors team. who used to no. no. Tom Brady? No. Yeah. <laughs> yep, that's the one. It becomes they used to they used to barbecue on their ships. And so the buccaneers, that's what it refers to. Are you gonna have to lay that one out a little bit? What, oh, what, they, what? <laughs> Buc- <laughs> barbecue. Bu- buccaneer means like barbecue. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. yeah, I didn't Wait, know. Wait, does part. it? Yeah. I don't know that one. Don't look at me for We did a whole we did a whole we did a whole short film on like pirates. Yeah, I remember the Blackbeard. Yeah, and we we did a Assassin's bunch of pirate Creed, research, right? and that's yeah, Assassin's Creed Four. God, that was years ago. It was years ago. It was a fucking. We it, had the worst extra on that set. Oh no, he was a stunt man. He wasn't an extra. He was a stunt man. But he, we had these squibs, okay? And you know, squibs like when they go off, they they can hurt. What a squib is is anytime yeah. you see blood, like they don't do them anymore. If you get shot in the old movies, and then out Tarantino the back. Tarantino did them in Django Unchained. I yeah. still think yeah. they look good. Oh, they, they're, they're my they favorite look, things. Yeah. I think they fucking. And so yeah. we had we were gonna do one of these, and the guy was we had these cool black powder pistols, and you know we could light them <laughs> off because they're black powder, um, and so it was really cool. We got. So could you electrically time the pistol to the squib? No, but we uh. you know with a little bit of. 
know how. We just kind of cut it and timed it up. Put a real bullet in there. (laughs) And so we had this one guy, and we're like, (laughs) we're like, okay, you're you're gonna get shot. You're gonna be in a chair, and you're gonna pull up your gun to fire, and then you're gonna get shot, and you're gonna go flying back in your chair. And so this guy, he was so worried about being squibbed. Like he he pulled his gun up the first take, and he gets shot, and and he and he just kind of like emotionlessly collapses on, and and he he did one of these. And we're like, um, okay, we're going to reset that and go for take two. We're um, going to ask you to act this yeah. time. <laughs> 20 minutes later, we're like, okay. Oh, whoa, calm down <laughs> over there. Either stop me, not act. <laughs> so, and then he did it He did it again, and then we had to move on because it was just like the worst performance. Did but you cut it from the... I think it's in there, actually. And then the funniest part about it, and, and this isn't to talk shit, it's just a funny anecdote. 100% to talk shit. No, it's just a funny anecdote. Like, there's there's a culture of, like, um, what do you call it? Pirate reenactors. And um, so we hired a bunch of these guys because they had, they had all the I gear. I smelly. They had all the equipment. <laughs> they had all the cool stuff. You know, they knew the history. So it was really nice to have these guys come on a set. And they were very, very nice. And, 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 and they Autistic. did it. Autistic. They, did a, they, had, they made a great addition to the piece. <laughs> but the funniest thing was is that they, they were all, the, the day before, we were like, all right, guys, we're going to go out on a tall ship. We're going to be sailing on the open ocean on a tall ship filming. So everyone take some Dramamine because tomorrow you could have motion sickness. And they were all like, bro, we're pirates, bro. Like, we don't need <laughs> Dramamine. Oh, I know where this story is going. <laughs> the next day, <laughs> half of them, literally half of them were sick in the uh what's it called you know the undership yeah the oh, hole the, the, the hull. Hull. Helm yeah, yeah the hull. the hull yeah dude it was so funny had they ever been on a boat i don't know they how the pr- fuck do you call yourself but a pirate after about 10 minutes after never about on 10 minutes on a tall ship you do get used to it you either get incredibly seasick or you don't it's there's like the, one yeah, or the other there's no in between there's no in between yeah and i dude i i got into it and I, after after 30 minutes like i was standing on the edge like with my hand on the rope like riding and while we were filming it was really fun this is one of the scariest things because that's when they actually this is drones had just become a thing yeah and you guys had your red oh, epic drones dude. oh over the, the ocean table. and this is again these just fucking yeah. came out eight thousand dollar camera body Flying over on an eight thousand dollar on an eight thousand dollar maybe it was like eighteen I don't know that was, was eighteen because you had the scarlet and that's just the, the body scarlet. yeah scarlet that was and back the drone in the day. was the same cost so we had you know twenty thirty thousand dollars of equipment over the open ocean trying to get these wide shots with no GPS no there was none of this no shit. automated control none no of the, return home yeah none of the I'm out of range <laughs> although the return send it, if you're you also send it out of range it's out of range <laughs> yeah it was <laughs> 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 straight to the water. <laughs> oh, those guys did a great job. Though. Those guys did a fantastic job. That's when you actually rent like drone operators. You'd have to pay somebody. They bring on their fucking giant. Yeah. It was a helicopter. Yeah, they were helicopters at this point yeah. to carry those big ass cameras. Yeah, and it was one dude that was just like, I got it, I got it. He had one guy doing the visuals on the camera and one guy flying it, and then over the ocean. That's fucking wild. <laughs> I remember watching that. I was like. Oh, that, I'm getting nervous. That man. would be on, really so. fucking funny, though, if you hit the return home button and you forget you're on a fucking naval vessel. Yeah. And it just goes, fucks off to the random <laughs> spot in the water you were and then that, lands. Yeah. They didn't have return home. And then we, we were trying to get a permit from the Coast Guard to let us take this other ship out um, because it was, a, it was a tall ship that they used in, like, Master and Commander. And, and all, it was the USS Rose, I believe. Mm. And it was sort of... They would allow the Coast Guard would allow it to transfer from one location to the other, but it wasn't seaworthy. And they had applied for this transfer permit Government. like five times, and other film productions had used it. And so we we're like, well, we'll just use the transfer permit. And then finally, the government was like, no. No more transfer <laughs> permits. You guys are using this for film production, and we happen to be the ones who they God, came down on. Yeah. So then in like literally a week, we had all this production lined up to film on a tall ship. Fortunately, there was another one in Dana Point, California mm-hmm. that we were able to use, but it was much smaller. And when the guys got in the hull, when they all got sick, it was like way smaller than, than the other Good one. Fucking vom- yeah. Uh, uh, and no, they, they clog- we clogged up all the bathrooms. And so you couldn't, you had to pee off the side of the, they're used to those tiny little colonial shits. Yeah. Kind of- <laughs> 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 they're not used to the, the hungry man jumbo meal. Yeah. <laughs> Me after brunch. 
<laughs> Fucking God. Christ. Is that so Civil War is your your bread and butter on history? <laughs> That's kind of my jam. Yeah, the, the Civil War and then I've been getting into Texas history lately and the Comanches and then um you know, to be stereotypical, the decline and fall of the Roman Empire, which there's a great... How often do you think about it? All day, every day. <laughs> yeah, there's good, a great good. history. Uh, it's a good It's a good base analysis. That's what I love, Jake. It's written in 1793. <laughs> He's so autistic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> He's just smart, Eli. Oh, that's what we call it. <laughs> it was written in 1793 by this man named Edward Gibbon. Um, it, he sort of like compiled the sort of foundational knowledge of the decline and fall of the Roman Empire from Caesar to 1500 AD. And so I've been reading through that one. Um, but I took, I took a side journey to read Lonesome Dove, which is a great novel about Texas. And then... Uh, and then <laughs> you guys need to, like, if you need information about... He's, he's all the gaps that I don't like. <laughs> Bro, like, his library. Weakest spot, Civil War. He's the expert. Oh, I, I got the Civil War. Yeah. Back in college, I have a whole class just about World War II. Haven't read a single thing. Have 100% in it, though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Did it really? Oh, and I swear to God, it's just me shitting on college students. <laughs> the whole class is graded on discussions, and I'm taking just extreme points of view and winning every argument. <laughs> Are you going to college right now? Yeah. Doing this now? Yeah. Okay. For funsies. Wow. You're getting a degree for yeah. His history? Yeah. I, dude, that's... God, people are built different. Like, I look at you guys, I'm like, okay, like a lawyer... And just studying it. You too. You're like, I want to be an electrician and I'm going to do these crazy TikTok videos. <laughs> and then I'm going to do some YouTube then videos. And I'm just going to happen to make long form YouTube and crush. And yeah. then you're going to hang out with this group and everyone's like, do fucking long form, Nick. You dumb fuck. It he's like, <laughs> okay. Right, his out. first. Yeah. Dude, his first video. How many views did your first long form get? I don't know. Is that like a million something now? Piece of sure. shit. <laughs> Just imagine your first, your first long form. Because these guys come from like the old OG you YouTube. You don't know where I've been, man. <laughs> Dude, I love that. <laughs> Even Brandon, it's like these time frames of decades, decades, and then Nick's like, well, I started TikTok two years ago and uh, <laughs> million views, huh? Nice. Look at my analytics. Those right. are pretty dope. You see <laughs> the fucking conversion? Gen Zer? <laughs> <laughs> I'm older than you. Are you? <laughs> yes. Wait, are you? I yes. Thought, I, I remember being like super close in age. You guys are both babies, though. So. 29? Oh, oh, wait. What the fuck did I think you were? I'm thinking of Aaron. I'm thinking of Aaron. <laughs> no, I'm Admin. older than you. Shit. Oh, fuck. Everyone I'm just a young now, bug, Brandon. Just now turning 28, like in a couple days. Wait, what's the most gangster? So if you're in the. Um, sorry, I love the history. Yeah. I'm like. <laughs> Yeah, most guys. What's the, Civil the question? War? Not Civil War, but um, the Roman Empire. Oh, dude, those guys. It, look, there's a lot of similarities that can be drawn about today and then, but at the same time, absolutely fucking none. Those guys. There was one incident where this is like 250 AD, 200 AD, tumultuous time, like past the Pax Romana, which is like the peace of Rome, the period from, you know, Augustus to 150 AD, where there was this sort of brilliant, peaceful period where the empire expanded, economies were working, they didn't need walls, they had foreign legions on all these different fronts. Plenty of roads. Yeah, plenty of roads. Which um, actually, like, system. I joke around, but that's, like, a big deal back then. Yeah, they had huge ducks. deal. Huge yep. deal, yeah. yeah the aqueducts weren't being attacked. Were great. And then things <laughs> things started to sort of, you know, come apart at the seams um, because of the, 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 the corruption and the comfort that the empire had. And at one point, so the Praetorian Guard, which you may have heard of from, you know, the... Um, Gladiator movie where he's like Praetorian. Sometimes the blade sticks. You know that. Oh whole yeah, scene. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Oh, the cold. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes the blade sticks. Exactly. So Praetorian Guard <laughs> particularly was like the um, secret service of of the time. They they but they were you know thousands thousands of soldiers, and and they were their job was to you know instill the security of the the purple the the, the you know the the empire. The, whoever held the title of Augustus, because it was Caesar, Julius Caesar, and then Augustus Octavian came along, and he was like, did he did an even better job and sort of solidified the empire as we think of it today. And then it became you weren't truly the ruler unless you were Caesar Augustus. If you were just a Caesar, it was like mm, he might get knocked off. But if you were Caesar Augustus, only one guy got to hold that title. And this was a time where people were fighting for that. And there was a there was an old sort of 
uh, like blue blood uh, senator who, you know, he had he had the right sort of stats on becoming Caesar Augustus. Why was his blood blue? <laughs> Jesus Christ! I'm joking. Go on. <laughs> So the right stats at the time, and he killed a lot of people. He went probably. out to the he went out to the Praetorians, and they did what was called a donative. Okay, if you were going to petition the Praetorians to sort of instill you with power, you had to give them what they call a donative, which is literally the same word donation. It was a fee. You paid every. You said, "I will give every Praetorian guard X amount of money if you support me." And he so literally converting this to modern times, Elon Musk would be president. Yes, and he literally outbid. So he he outbid <laughs> another. We're going guy. to Mars, boys. The, the Praetorians were like, "Well, we got this guy over here, and he's offering us this, and we got you over here, and you're offering us this." And he offered them more money, so they said, "Well, fine. You will invest you with the purple, and you'll be Caesar Augustus." And that guy was literally Caesar for like thirty days until another guy found out about it from some other section of the empire and came with his army and just took it and that's that's they used to do that stuff all the time i was so gangster back in the day it was just bloodshed as hell or fear bloodshed and fear and then when you get into the later stuff you get some of these really sort of eccentric characters that come from the sort of barbarian fringes of the empire that the barbarian because you know there was a whole thing like we citizenship Roman citizenship was an actual thing. Like there was yeah. taxation, legal title, all these things that were based upon Roman citizenship. And and as the empire expanded, they would give citizenship to more fringe elements of the empire to sort of quell the fronts and to position them in a way that affiliated them towards the empire rather than towards the the, the fronts who were against the empire. And so, but then eventually they got a little carried away with that, and they got a little bit too you know handouty with how many who was a citizen, but it allowed for these really eccentric characters to come up from these fringes, like, and, and become Caesars from all these strange walks of life. And the book basically goes into all that stuff. This is fucking see, I don't know any of this. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> are we just, are we just going to play fuck with Eli with history facts? I, I love it though. This is it's your turn. It's your turn. Yeah. History. Go. Okay. All right. I got one. Uh, there was, uh, I can't fucking remember his I'm name off the top so of my hard. head, but it was, uh, we're talking about civil war and talking about, um, uh, privately owned warships and everything like that. There was one of these, uh, I'm trying to read Buchanan, something or another. I can't remember who it was, but it was a, uh, Confederate general or Colonel or something like that, that basically bought his own commission. He basically was just like, yeah, I'm rich as shit. I think he was from Charleston, I believe. He was rich as shit, and he was just like, yeah, um, I want to be in control of a uh, regiment of soldiers, and I'm going to arm them all with my shit. I'm going to buy them all their equipment. I'm going to buy them everything. And like, he basically like funded a good bit of just his, his own... Basically, he bought his own regiment. He bought like all out. the nicest shit too. Oh yeah, <laughs> and then went out, and then they just fucking kicked ass. It was kind of like the Confederate version of the Rough Riders. No shit. So he just bought everything out. Dude, it's so interesting. It's gonna bother that me that I don't know that. Look at get his name. That those are like all those stories. It's, it's a Japan Japanese history. Are I you know ready that. for mine? Yeah. Oh, you know the. I love this. This is my, know, my. This is my tism right now. <laughs> do you know who the first American to find out that Stalin died was? The who? The first American to find out that Stalin died. No. Is it going to be a pop culture person? Hmm? Okay, I kind of figured oh. that's where this was going. A beetle? Nope. Oh, well, they're not American. American. Jesus Christ! Yeah, I'm thinking like Western. Johnny Cash. Really? Radio Tech. In the war, he was the first one to receive the transmission that Joseph Stalin died. No shit. So yeah, there's that. Wait for <laughs> real? Yeah, he just found out. <clears throat> I mean, some historians are going to argue and be like, "Well, he got it in Russian, so he actually just wrote it down and then gave it to the translator, and the translator would technically." He's yeah. the one that heard the. But fucking those people are really yeah. fucking annoying. Yeah, they're really fun at parties. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's fucking crazy. And did you find out what your guys is? No, I, I, I'm going to have to look into that later. I, I, It's been years since I heard that story. Dude, all those things, it's like, I, I love those little segments of history because it is. It's like, hey, money, I can buy this, and then I can equip my soldiers with the best equipment, which makes a huge fucking difference, yeah. in my honest opinion. 
I like, mean, my, I, money talks and bullshit takes the bus. That's like the the fucking that is the universal lesson of history. What was uh, God? I I went off a deep end for a second. Was it like didn't one of Lewis and Clark or somebody in there? They had like this super cool. It was like a repeating rifle, but it was a fucking air musket. It was yeah, they're yeah, like yeah. very expensive, very whatever. But he could actually fire off like a lot of ammunition a minute if it was functioning properly. Air rifles were a big thing before we got self-contained cartridges. Mm -hmm. That was that was a big thing. There's a lot of steampunk prototype weapons that were um, that were all air powered. There was one I had not heard of, and I can't remember what it's called, but actually Dick Masterson was the one who told me about it. Uh, he's like, ah, you're a big gun guy. You probably know this. And it, I did not know about it. It was like an early, like it was like a 1700s, 1800s prototype that was basically just like a bowl that would spin really fucking fast. And it had a hole in it. And basically it would just use centripetal force to fucking sling bullets real goddamn quick. Wow. I was like, wow, what a fucking weird concept. That's super cool. There's all sorts of weird stuff. Like before we figured out, oh, oh, here's, here's a really cool history fact. I went down this rabbit hole because I was looking at... Um, uh, specifically Gatling guns. Okay. Um, You're going to make an AK version of one? No. God, <laughs> the, uh, I think Sons of Guns actually did that back in the day. <laughs> like a Saiga 12 shotgun. It was <laughs> retarded. But the... Uh, so, Eli, you like this. Cool history fact. Uh, do you know when the first minigun was patented? Like an electric... Tell them. Did I tell... Oh. I already told you? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. It's, it's, it, yeah it, was it was like, like the, the first electric... Three. No, later It was, like, it was literally like... One of the first documented uses for an electric motor was fuck it, let's put it on a gun. Of it was course. like one of the first things they did. It was like in the 1870s, but they were they were looking at it and they were, they they basically patented the minigun 80 years before General Electric ever touched it because they were just like it was literally like the Tony Stark's dad. Wait, are you thing. telling me that Edison claimed something that didn't belong to him? I don't know if it was Edison, but... <laughs> he never did No, because I've seen the drawings, and there's like oh, a so big... Uh, round yeah, okay, I, I got it. Yeah, yeah, I'm slow. But w what they did... Uh, well, because they, they were thinking of an electrically, electrically fired Gatling gun, essentially. They were like, we literally don't have the technology to feed this fast enough. They said, hypothetical rate of fire of 2,000 rounds a minute. They're like, we, we, can, we can shoot it, we just can't... Feed it. We don't know how. Like, let's put a pin in this. It was the Tony Stark dad thing where he's like, this is technology that is above my time. But here, keep this for later and you'll figure it out when you have the tech. Wow. Because that was before, obviously, we had self-contained cartridges that fed on a belt or anything yeah. like that. And once we got that all figured out, we literally went back and we're like, hey, hold on. Wait a minute. Let's... I want to kill a lot of people really quick. Um, let's, let's, let's dig that old patent out. I love old weapon tech. It's the most crazy shit. As you're saying, it's like uh, humans are just like, oh, is, motor. What can we do first? Car? No. Kill. Look, God. as advanced as we are, the two things that progress our society, our society forward technologically war. is war and sex. Yes. Yeah, literally. Sorry. As much as we like to pretend... We're right. savages. VR. If you yeah. wonder why want, VR tech is the where it is, it's because we want to... Fuck. We, <laughs> this is like, literally why VR tech. Some incels wanted to get down. <laughs> yeah. like, por oh. Pornography has led to so much technological in innovation. It's like, it's degenerate as shit, but like, that's just objectively true. Right. Cyberpunk. That's, that's what, what I mean. industrial We just want to fight and fuck. And that's all we want to do. Yeah. That's the cyberpunk with that, like, as you were saying on the anime, it's like, they just like VR and they have the yeah the dick stroke. Women are 3, women. Are, women are fucked. Well, that's why it's kind of a it's kind of a miracle that Touch we're grass. as uh, lawful and civilized as we generally are. Oh yeah, I mean we'll it, take it, it for took granted, years. But, yeah. It took a couple uh, couple of thousand years, years couple to, of thou. It's like you, you guys know, were, were talking about like thou. how all power was was basically derived from just fear and blood. Yeah. And you know I'm so glad that we don't do that anymore. Like to secure the petrodollar. For example, right. Wait. Yeah. No. No. No, wait. no. We're going with that. That's where we're going. With. Yeah. <laughs> no. Fuck it. Yeah. That's exactly what happened. When was the first? Uh, the first guns were invented during the um, Mongolian. How, what do you I consider a gun? Good pivots. The Mongolians used to use them for the. They would ride them on the horse and the. the really. Yeah, Mongolians built. Uh, Mongolians were the first ones to develop. Like they would use explosives <clears throat> in battle. They would really. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Genghis Khan was a fucking G with that shit. They also used the um, riding into battle. They found out if you put a tube and um, a metal tube 
and you would ride and you put TNT or explosives in it and just jam goes shit out, down it. Goes out the enemy direction. Yeah, and they're like, hey, this is dope just for explosives too. They would wow. use uh they would use dead bodies and stuff to launch over walls in order to poison. They also found out, hey, this shit explodes too. Yeah. Use that. Like Genghis Khan, you were looking at he invented the Minutemen. A lot of Full, kids. Yeah, a lot, lot of kids. Yeah, a lot, lot of, of a lot more than your guy. A lot, lot of, more than 185. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you that. He, much. he uninvented a lot of other people's kids. <laughs> yes, he did. So much so he reduced the carbon footprint of the entire planet. I mean, he did that. He yes. did. Literally, you can track yeah, that fucking environment. Do you know that? Right? Climate yes. change. He yeah. changed the yeah, carbon the, footprint. The, look, guys, on he was for climate change. He was, climate climate so he was not Christ. not for climate change. He was for climate preservation. Yeah, I don't know. I forget. Yeah, like, he, he fucking mm. killed enough people that there was an actual change in the carbon footprint it that is documented. Like, huh? It may Jesus have been coincidental. Oh, yeah, well, he killed a fucking shit ton of people. That's like, true. How many he killed? Was it like fit, uh, fifth or tenth percent of the population? It was yeah, a, a percentile lot. of yeah. the human population, right. which is that's so enough, that that's is why feat. that's why Hitler's your climate <laughs> hero. <laughs> You know, I never thought of it like that. I read my... <laughs> I read my Nick comp and there's the nothing in there floor. about... about uh, like, Bye, what? Woody. <laughs> uh, oh, my God. Uh, fucking hell. This just flew away. Do you have time for one more story? Huh? One more story that you may or may not know. Go. Um, I can't remember which side did it. Okay, but this... This sounds like some redneck engineering, so I'm going to say Confederate just off the top of my head. Civil War. Fucking rednecks. Uh, the Battle of, of Petersburg. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Do you know about the Petersburg Crater? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's a cool one. Yeah, tell that one. So that was like yeah. a fucking 1800s nuke. Yeah. So what they basically did is they just, they they dug into the into the earth uh, during, like, they knew basically where they were going to fight. So they're like, all right. So, so what if we lay an yeah. ambush where they dug up a bunch of land, filled it with barrels of gunpowder? Like a fuckload. So, so either side, they they were entrenched. Yeah, they were entrenched outside of Petersburg. <clears throat> the, you know, they had holes in the holes in the side of the hills. Nobody was moving anywhere. So the Union gets this great idea. Is it was it Union? Yeah, ah, they were like, bitch. what if we just dug a giant tunnel over to the Confederate side and then put a bunch of gunpowder in it and exploded their entrenchments. And they were in the middle of doing this, and like something did something go wrong? I don't remember, but I, they I've blew been a to the giant crater. hole in the earth in between these two battlements, and yeah, it's a big fucking crater. How much fucking TNT was that? Quite a like, lot. British did it to the Germans in World War One. It was way bigger though. Mm. I what think, was that one? I think was? they killed like. They they dug they it's called sapping where you dig underneath. Yep. They sapped for two years. They dug a tunnel system and carried in black powder and explosives underneath the German lines for two sapped. fucking years. That's what, like that's the term for like digging underneath the enemy and I drink your blowing them up. Like, no, I know it's like that's, like, like that's where the term sapper or, comes from. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, like, that's, oh, that's where sapper yeah, came from. Exactly. Yeah, interesting. Okay, so. It was, they killed like 10,000 Germans when they blew this thing up. Like, it made a fucking lake. Wow. But, like, my whole thing that blew me away was like, fucking, uh-huh. hey, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna dig a trench for fucking two years. Just go ahead and hold the front line right where you're at for two fucking years. <laughs> just the thought process is like, this battle is gonna last that long. World War II was abs- home by Christmas. Oh, sorry, World War I <laughs> was absolutely, they had the technology of World War II. But they had the techniques. And the American Revolutionary War, all on the same battlefield. Yes. <laughs> There's oh, fucking chaos. Austro-Hungarians are running around on horseback with armor and swords. Britain's got fucking <laughs> tanks. Like, yeah, I mean, that, that's look, what I love is you have tanks and horses on the same fucking battleground. And it wasn't weird. <laughs> that was where that was where the World War One and World War Trains. II, in, in, a, in a sentence, is, is how feudalism ended. Like the actual... Political situation, the fighting techniques, everything that came after it, that that period of time, the first half of the 20th century, is where feudalism actually truly died, and the modern era began. 
Um, and it's really where we learned our lesson about things like the League of Nations and why we should never have giant alliances with multiple countries who don't have the same interests. Right. Who are all in cousins. the interests of because we will will you know we would avoid another war. Yeah. Fuck. So <laughs> shit, so, we didn't fine. learn the goddamn Vic- thing. Victoria, Queen That's right, we'll Victoria. learn next time. <laughs> the Czar, the Czar of Can't Russia. Can't wait to go to mainland China. <laughs> uh, Wilhelm of Germany and um, the King of England were all first cousins. I want to say who, who their their grandmother was Queen Victoria. That's literally what kicked off World yeah, War. Yeah, and they all had alliances. Right? And so yeah. if you if you listen to right um now? yeah, I have that pistol actually. It's a 19 model 1910 Browning, something like that. It's a little small no gun. Shit. Yeah, I've got one. I'm I'm going to do a video on that spoiler. Uh, yeah. oh, okay, it's only fine I spoil one of my videos. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do a video up going up on it uh calling it uh testing the gun that started World War 1. I. I volunteer. Just you you <laughs> yeah, if you and killed fat electrician. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking a single one. See, ah, history's fucking dope. Yeah, I only know like Japanese history, like Nobunaga, the samurai that. Yeah, you were telling me about that the other day, that dude. If, like those or or Genghis Khan, those gangsters. It's in your were, blood, dude. I mean, not Japanese, but close enough. Yeah. I can I would do the exit. Dude. Was it a uh, Philippines? Where, where are you yeah, from? Yeah, okay. Filipino. Yeah, yeah. yeah, not Japanese. They're the the good Asian. Well, to be fair, <laughs> a good bit of the Philippines was Japanese for a minute. <laughs> and a lot yeah, of, they get along real well. A lot of yeah. people who uh, <laughs> one another. A lot of people who are Mexican have Filipino blood because the Spaniards were over there, and they. Oh yeah. That's how Wendy, my wife's Mexican, and she's got a little Filipino because they took one of her you know, grandparents from the Philippines and brought it to Mexico. Totally yeah. on purpose. <laughs> like totally yeah. yeah they're to ask. T- they were like, hey, you want to come? They're like, yeah, totally, that sounds great. totally voluntarily. <laughs> yeah, no, no, History is fucking metal when you start looking into a lot of it. It's like, oh wow, literally every single one of us is just a child of fucking and pillaging. Oh yeah. Like it's that's some all point, it is. Probably a lot. All yeah. it is. You look as spe- until the last hundred years, that's all <laughs> War and everything was. So it's like, hey, this is how all countries develop. So my grandma, winners win. My, my grandparents met. She was a German civilian in World War II. Mm. Yeah, and then grandpa came in and was like, hey, yep. Well, do you like Texas? <laughs> <laughs> Come on down. But yeah, yeah. Wendy's uh, grandmother uh, was uh, a Spaniard in in Mexico at the time. Who, when uh, Zapata and and um, Don Quixote, like, fought against the government. Look at all our faces right they, now. He's white. He has no idea they, what you're talking um, about. <laughs> Me and the other and, Mexican and Don, are like, I don't even, I can't even say was that it Don, word. Don Quixote is the... Was it Don Quixote? Or the, he's the guy who fought the windmills. Okay, well, Zapata. Uh, yeah. Whoever was to the north of Zapata. I'm perhaps to, getting I, it wrong. But anyways. I'm trying to remember it was, who it was. Yep. They, they, was they, <laughs> they, you know, they basically, they... Took over and yeah, they just owned the shit. Yeah. Nobunaga, Japan. You had a literal dude that was a poor family. Or right, they, they were like, "Hey, we're doing good." Dad dies. You're supposed to like the oldest son takes place. Nobunaga wasn't the oldest son, and he was the one that didn't give a shit. You're supposed to respect your like dad. Bury. I forget the traditional Japanese burial method. Yeah. He burnt the body. He's like, "I don't give a fuck. We're doing it my way now. I'm taking command of all this shit." And they're like, "No." Then the brothers that didn't agree, he was like, okay, well, then war. fucking fight now me for war. it. Yeah, well, war. Yeah. And then he took control of it. And then he was like, okay, well, we're training all the farmers and we're training everyone to actually be samurai and know how to fight. Also, uh, these things called guns. Uh, I don't give a shit. Everyone else thinks these are not honorable. We're using them. Let them come in. We'll sh- uh, The first wave, shoot them and then pull out the swords that you all know how to use because it was a time when only the samurai knew how to use swords. He's like, fuck that. Farmers are going to learn. Everyone is going to be equipped. And then all the dudes that rose with him that were farmers and just dumb people, he made them the executives. He's like, hey, you're in charge of this entire region. Hey, you're in charge of this entire region. Hey, let's fake them out. We're going to say we're going here, and then they'll send their army, and then we'll go to their military base and just wipe them out, kill their leaders, and then we'll control that area. And then he unified Japan doing that, which is fucking insane. Dude was a hard ass. Everyone respected the shit out of him, but... Dude was a hard ass wow. when it came to combat. It was awesome. Like, read that piece of history. You're like, this yeah. is one dude. One dude. T- 
took over all of Japan just from his ideology. You know, next time we do one of these history-centered podcasts, I promise that I'm going to have a complete story that I know all the names of everyone involved, <laughs> and I'll be able to actually tell it. <laughs> Yeah, I'll sure. do my research. Yeah. You this, is shit I'm, this is shit I remember off the fly. It's like, dude, it's been eight years since I heard this fucking story. Was it Pancho Villa? Pancho Villa. Yeah, okay. that's what it was. Boom. So you. Got I, I was thinking about <laughs> it. I was like, man, people in the comments are going to get me. It's Pancho Villa. Yeah. yeah. Don Quixote was the guy who fought windmills. Uh -huh. Imaginary dragons. And shit. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's a legend. Yeah. And on that note, we're going to wrap up this history special with lawyer Jake over here, Brandon, and Mr. Fat Electrician. Guys, where can we find you? You beautiful people. Uh, Fatelectrician.com. Brandon Herrera for Congress.com. YouTube.com slash Corridor Crew. Corridor Crew now? Not Corridor Digital? No, we're Corridor Digital. Wherever you find us. Just, I just type I in Corridor and then the autofill will do the rest. I just like you said Corridor it's Crew now. Yeah. Corridor, corridor Crew is my favorite. That's, you know, it's good. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Hey, go check out the after show. Brandon might have to leave because he has another podcast to do, but oh. we'll do an extra 20 yeah. minutes. Oh. Hang out. Have a good time. Busy boy. Bye.